All right. Welcome back. You are listening to AIW's The Card is Gonna Change. My name is Mr. Ronald Two Legs. Uh, we're back. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you came straight from the live episode we did, the Ashtabula County Fairgrounds or not, or if, you know, bumping around on them. But we are live together, uh, sort of together, but uh, I'm with AIW owner John Thorne. Remotely together. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess I just meant like live to simulcast. Yeah. <laughs> Simulcast. Not yeah. sitting next to each other in a dusty ass field, which my fucking computer is just taking a beating with these outdoor shows. Um, it's kind yeah, of, you got to get like some kind of case on it or something. <sighs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's fucking yeah, it's dusty as shit. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's been the summer of the outdoor shows. I mean there's one more one more to go still on. Uh, what is it? The twenty seventh at No Class. Yeah, Russell Rager. Well, what about uh, <coughs> what about that one that just got added? Oh, it, outdoor? actually, yeah, it's not done. The Wadsworth, Ohio, too, is. You know, uh, well, they do have a backup though. You know, in in the event of uh, weather. Uh, so, but as of now, yeah, I forgot that one is going to be uh, an outdoor as well. So two more. The AIW at least traveling circus rolls on this summer. Um, There's also, I mean, still a potential for. Another show to be added in September that I'm sure I'll get the official yay or nay on this week. Um, but yeah, oh, fuck, it's oh, been crazy. What weekend is that? I, Beginning or end? It, it would be the next weekend. So it's like boom, boom, boom. So it'd be the weekend of the seventeenth, sixteenth, or seventeenth. Oh, okay, sixteenth. Yeah, September sixteenth. So, well, so I mean, <laughs> unconfirmed. I think it's getting a little. I think it's getting a little tight right now, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, there's been conversations that have been had, and it's just like, man. So, like, I'm already, like, looking at the 2023 calendar, like, saying, okay, like, how can we space this out better next year? But, you know, these things just keep popping up, and it's it's hard to say no, you know what I mean? But Well, it's in different markets, at least, kind of, for right. the most part. I mean, that's kind of far apart, at least Wadsworth and Canton and – you know yeah i mean jefferson you know i, I guess right, yeah. you know we haven't really we haven't really um podcasted because we took uh, a week off last week mm-hmm. i believe um we haven't really podcasted since the jefferson ohio show which they were you know the the great lakes geek fest people were extremely happy with already trying to lock us down for 2023 which is crazy you know what i mean like i was like i wasn't even thinking about 2023 dates but that's what made me you know i was like i better get a calendar and try to space (laughs) this out a a little bit you know like a little better i was actually like i get like googled like a 2023 calendar and printed one out today and i'm like trying to look look at dates you know and it's just like uh it's i mean it's it's a good problem to have but i always run you know, like I, I always run through my head, like, man, is this too much? Are people going to get sick of us? Is this going to burn people out? Cause I mean, you know, I feel burned out. I can only imagine what like, you know, the fans are feeling to an extent trying to keep up with everything and support every show. I mean, it's, it's been a lot, you know, so it's a bit of a marathon. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to do, you know, I'm trying to do better. It's like, you know, it's good to be busy, but you know, I, I'm also pretty conscious of, you know, burnout and things like that. So, sure. um, yeah, I mean, it's just been, it's been crazy, but I, I thought that, uh, you know, it was a great day, uh, and at the Ashtabula County Fairgrounds, uh, for the inaugural Bill Alfonso, uh, tournaments, it, it was, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was a cool day. I don't know. I mean, you were out there for the thick of it in the thick of it for all of it. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was extremely nerve-wracking up to it, um, just because it never really did anything as far as, like, the live podcasting and getting the sound and all that together. And then for the wrestling, too, like, I just remember last year and just outdoor stuff is tough. Um, yeah. But then once we got there, I uh, had some help from some people, uh, Stacy, everybody knows Stacey Silvers, Charles Margarine, Summer, some of the other guys. Uh, Summer's old lady was helping, too. That was cool. Um, pretty much any everybody that helped out, big Ed, you know Ed, young Ed, your favorite person on the on the planet was there. Shout out. out to Justin. Sh- shout out to Justin Summers though. He brought that like that pod board. The roadcaster. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super piece of, it's super sweet piece of equipment. Um, I appreciate Justin very much for him bringing that out because you know what I mean. Like that's a expensive piece of equipment to just be bringing out in the dusty bowl that is the Ashtabula County Fairgrounds. But we pulled it off. I think it sounded really good. I think the whole day went off really well. I think Fonzie was proud of it. Um, we did the show the last time we did this show. If you know, if you listen to that show, you know I feel like we paid proper tribute to Fonzie, you know, a guy that deserves it. So I, f- I feel like we did him well, you know. Yeah, he was he was uh, extremely humbled and and happy by you know the, the entire day and you know especially you know the podcast after the fact you know not a lot of people s- stuck around live to listen to it but you know we still recorded it sure and uh, you know put it out there and uh, I I think he was extremely happy with everything uh, just uh, a, a crazy day you know a crazy weekend you know now Doug Gilbert calls me all the time. Like, it's just, <laughs> Saturday, you know, in between shows, is a Doug Gilbert phone call, you know, like <laughs> North Canton. That's fun. Uh, yeah, you know, I, th- I think it was, uh, yeah, I, I liked it. You know, the the event organizers seemed to seem to like it, and um, you know, they were very iffy this year. You know what I mean? Uh, just based on, uh, you know, the first year we did it, and then. <laughs> you know, just summer and competition of w- with other events in the area and all kinds of, you know, different reasons. They were kind of iffy about it, but I, I think it turned out well for them. I think they're, you know, like I said, they were happy enough to, they want to have discussions to do it again next year. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, and th- so that was a good event. Speaking of good events, I feel like this past weekend we just did uh, Canton Street Fair was a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't get to do it last year. Um, I f- had something on the schedule I forget, but I n- didn't get to experience it last year. But holy crap, that was so much fun this this weekend, this past Saturday. Yeah, and Steve and I will probably have to uh, maybe we'll do a Patreon podcast. Steve was supposed to be here today, but uh, he's having uh, electrical issues. Uh, I guess the the power is out in uh, his city all over the place so he's was having trouble uh getting you know any sort of uh, electricity or a wi-fi connection or anything to to come through so uh two legs and i decided to just knock it out here today and, and record it you know heading in a jail at weekend but steve and i will probably have to do one because um you know the one weekend that we had off we didn't have off because we were uh contractually obligated to work for the insane clown posse at the gathering of the juggalos yeah back with Uh, the clowns again huh back with the clowns again which you know was uh, an adventure in itself uh that you know maybe we'll get into for a special patreon or something because uh yeah so i mean even the weekends off for aiw you know i i had that going on so i've just been running hard i think it's like six or seven straight weeks with stuff uh, which is really crazy when you're used to maybe doing, you know, one a month or two, you know, occasionally a two a month. You know, it's just been a, a wild, 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 crazy schedule in summer right now. But uh, the North Canton Street Festival was, uh, I, I, I think Ed Batts said it best. He said it's like Russell Rager for elementary people, yeah. like elementary school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not just because there's kids there, but just because, you know, it is like a family friendly vibe, but it is still kind of like a, a cool and wild, exciting environment. Mm-hmm. It, the fact that there's food everywhere and we could like in between, I went and got like a corn dog. First I started off with like a corn dog and then, uh, then I had this elote that was fucking so good. Oh man. Just the food, the food was great. I love that part of it. <laughs> Yeah, and you know they they give us like they they build us like this little makeshift arena with bleachers and you know barricades and all that. So it's like a cool little vibe, like right in the middle of the street uh, in North Canton. I'm not, you know, I don't know if uh, they're gonna have us back again next year or not, but uh, I, I would think that they were happy with it. Um, you know, we delivered four pretty different and unique shows throughout the day, uh, and. I thought it was I thought it was a great time. I mean, you know, I know you didn't do it last year, but it, it was very similar vibe as last year. Uh, so I'm interested to know what your impressions were. I mean, if they didn't have us back, it would be crazy because the environment around when we were, <clears throat> excuse me, if like bef- even up to 10 minutes before and like even sometimes 30 minutes after because we were letting people do pictures in the ring and stuff, the environment during the shows and before and after was 
way more energetic and fun and people were interacting and having a good time screaming yelling laughing cheering way more than any like when i went to go get food you've seen a couple of they had some like line dancing stuff going on they had a couple other interactive stuff they had like a dj for kids dancing and what like nothing had the energy or like crowd that we did and uh it was a lot of fun um playing I want to say I played members only music like eight times. Um, just all the different singles you see, like this person versus that person. It's, it's like it's like non-canon AIW show, so you just see wild and crazy stuff that's not like your everyday. It's canon, but not canon. Well, right? It's yeah. Kind of like a house. It's very you know. I I guess you could call it like a house showy. Yeah. You know what I mean? To where we can do different matchups, and sometimes tag guys can get a single get a singles going on, and. Um, was it you? you know, like was that. it you that said it? It does definitely stuff feels like a house show because it got the generator going for the sound. It sounds like the TV truck. <laughs> oh, that was no, somebody no, no, was no, like, yeah, it really, really feels like a house show with this generator going like the TV trucks right over there. And I just la- started laughing so hard. I was like, that's fucking funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was, um, I was almost, I was, I got there at eleven fifty nine. So yeah, I was technically did. late because I was trying to, and w- we were supposed to start promptly at at 12 which we did um, pretty much i mean so i decided to pull this rib on swoggle oh God, and so i ordered all these i i ordered all of these uh green glow sticks <laughs> and you know we booked it in a way we were going to have the rip city shooters come out and save them <laughs> which but he didn't know and then he also didn't know that they were going to you know come out with glow sticks because you know Josh Bishop much like he loves TNA uh, he loves like mid two thousands uh, DX. You know, he's not talking about nineties DX. He loves like Shawn Michaels, Swoggle, and a Triple H throwing glow sticks DX army. Yeah. Um. So I picked Swoggle up in from the airport, and we were gonna go straight there. And I'm driving, and I go, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> the Amazon glow sticks I ordered are sitting on my kitchen table. So like, I turned around. I was like, "Oh, I forgot something for the show," and I. I you know, shoot home like real quick. I wasn't that far, you know, away because I had to kind of backtrack from the airport past my house. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I was, I realized it luckily after only one, one or two exits that I was past my house and I went back and I grabbed them. I, I jumped in the car and Steve was unable to make it on Saturday. And last year, we had his iPad, his iPad, and my iPad, and we—that's how we recorded the shows. Mm-hmm. And he was unable; he was unable to make it on Saturday, so I had the iPad, and you know, I have my iPad, and then you know, I'm, I'm driving and I'm texting, like, does anybody have anything to record with? And like, Pedro's like, yeah, there's some students with iPhones and this and that. And I asked, you know, are we in the same place as last year? And they're like, yeah. So I remembered, you know, last year. I we were right behind that YMCA or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I put that, I put that in my, uh, my GPS and I'm, I'm pulling around and like, I see where the ring is and it's like barric, the streets like barricaded off. And I just like go around the barricade and I pulled right up to the, uh, to the entrance curtain I jumped out of my car with an, with my iPad. I gave it to one of the students. I turned it on. I gave it to one of the students. It was like 11.59. <laughs> I said, get out there and record. And then, like, uh, so we didn't miss any any of uh, any of the footage. We at least have one angle of it, uh, of everything. And then, you know, I was, I was able to, you know, I got swoggled out and all that stuff. And then. I hid the I hid the glow sticks in Wes Barkley's merch, and then you know him, I, and Josh, we kind of conspired on how we were going to pull this off. Uh, it's a swoggle, and then I know that's when they got involved with you, and they wanted the Run DMC DX music yeah. and all that. <laughs> he goes, "Don't tell anybody." He goes, "If Swoggle comes over, or anything, he goes even run, hide the run sheet." He goes, "Don't let anyone see, and don't tell anyone that what the music we're doing." And holy shit, was that so funny. He even said, too, so he was so fucking pissed. Because, you know, like I said, I played everyone's music so many times, and, like, that angle went throughout the show. And so I... But when it it first happened, I don't think I've ever laughed that hard in my entire (laughs) life. Because he was so, like, he was so mad about it. And, like... I know. (laughs) You know... He threatened me. They're doing their... They're doing their thing, you know, in the ring. And then, you know, behind the curtain, uh, Wes and Josh are just 
they're going through this Amazon box that I got and they're just cracking all of these glow sticks and they're putting them in their knee pads and everything else. And Josh like put like a, like a neon green X on his tights with tape and they're just getting so into it. And then (laughs) when that music hit and they came out with the glow sticks and Swoggle is motherfucking me from the ring. He was so mad. He's like, you fucking dickheads. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And he's screaming. And I am just uncontrollably laughing about this. I thought it was <laughs> so funny. And I, it probably does not even translate to this podcast how funny that I thought this was. But Swoggle was so angry about it. It made it so good. Oh, he threatened me several times. <laughs> to the point, if you remember, I came up to you and I'm like, dude, he's like threatening me. What should I do? And you're like, just play it. It's fine. <laughs> To, yeah. he, so it, I don't even know if somebody got it with the Roman cam, but it was like the third time that we played it, and he comes past the music thing, and he goes, "I'm telling you right now, if you play that fucking DX music again, I will fucking kill you." He goes, "I will pull." I'm telling you, I go, "Come, on, I'm a guy. I'm just tell what that do you know? I try to play dumb. I'm like, I do what they tell me. He's like, if you play it, I will fucking pour water on your computer." And I'm like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" Like he was so fucking mad. Yeah, it, it, just uh, he was mad about having a team with Wes and Josh because he hasn't blocked on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he's just he was mad about the whole thing, and then the DX thing just put it over the top. Oh, it was so fucking because that's why he hates that's what he hates Josh and Wes because they always be like, hey, uh, you know, what's up with Triple H? <laughs> you know, they'll like they'll like ask him all these, you know, two thousand and nine backstage WWF news and rumors. And uh, he gets so annoyed by them. So, like, this was, like, the ultimate annoyance of, of Swoggle. And, uh, they were so happy. I loved it. They were extremely happy. I've never seen either of those guys. That <laughs> and they kept doing life. the X, like, cross with their arms. Josh and Wes both. Like, it just the pure enjoyment on their faces. And Swoggle was just so fucking angry. <laughs> they, they said at the last match for the main event for the big payoff thing or whatever, when they all came out together... Uh, Swoggle took uh, Swoggle picked up two glow sticks and made an X, and Josh said that that made his entire wrestling career. Yes, <laughs> uh, and then he threw him into the crowd. That's... But it was kind of funny because you know Swoggle was so mad about it, and then like you know for the main event, you know you play the music, and he goes out right when the song breaks, and he's like, "That's how you make an entrance, you marks." You know what I mean? Like he's yelling at him. He's like, "Come on," you know, because no one was paying attention to when you know where the when they should go through the curtain. Yeah, yeah, because he was so it, fucking mad at me for playing it, and then he was the first one through the curtain, the most enthusiastic one. Yeah, he was like, this is how you do it, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, if you're going to do DX, this is how you do it. Oh, that was great. What a great day. See, that's the type of sh- uh, that's the type of shit you're going to see only at, at shows like that. You know, it was free, too, free to come out. Um, there was, I got a low Yeah, that's what was great about it, too. It was, it was, awesome. you know, it was completely it was completely free. Um, you know, I, I, I think... You know, we we probably made some fans and, you know, doing things like the, you know, in between every show, we did a free meet and greet with somebody in in the ring. So, you know, a lot of the families got to get up inside of the ring and take photos and. You know, we uh, printed up T-shirts to give away, so oh, you know that dude. was that got everybody all enthusiastic. Everybody knows T-shirts get people hyped. Like if you go to Cavs game and stuff like that, T-shirts get people hyped, and this was no different, man. People were hyped for those T-shirts, which was a brilliant idea. A hey, T-shirts are uh, definitely hype people up, but yeah, I definitely think we made some new fans. Um, at least that will make the trek. You know, to the to the shrine without a doubt. As if we don't get enough people there already, I definitely see us. You know what I mean? Some new people coming from that for sure. Yeah, I think you know it, it, we got some. We definitely got you know a, a lot of uh, Instagram followers and different social media likes and stuff off of it. So all in all, I think it was a, a successful Saturday. You know, shout out to the North Canton Chamber of Commerce for bringing us back for the second year in a row. You know, you can't you, you can't beat you know a, uh, a a paid gig like that you know in front of uh, huge huge audiences every time, and uh, just a fun oh, day no. you know. So you know, all in all, I I don't think it could have gotten much better than that. Yeah, we capped it off watching Journey with uh, with the with the Bishop folks, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Bishop. Yeah, the, <laughs> shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Josh Bishop's parents. They were they were in the house and. Uh, Josh's mom actually dropped the cooler off full of uh, water and monsters for everybody. Uh, yeah, that so was super nice. Shout, 
Thank you so much, Shout Kim. Shout out to her for that. She says she's a big fan uh, of the podcast. She listens all the time. Yeah, yeah. So so does so does his dad. So you know, oh, yeah. uh, always great, always great to see them. You know, and appreciate their support and you know uh, coming out and 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 hanging out and you know I, I thought it was i thought it was a great day and you know uh, one other thing to uh mention is you know we had a couple people that had to can't pull off for different reasons uh, so you know some of these new students that are supposed to debut on saturday kind of got thrown into the fire a, a few times here you know on totally un you know unprepared for having to wrestle luckily they did have gear with them got to always be ready uh, but <laughs> You know, then we make this tag match because Casey Carrington couldn't make it. <laughs> it was supposed to be bulking season versus Brian Carson and Casey Carrington. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but then Chuck Stone <laughs> is late because he flew in from California and then forgot the tag belt. So he had to go home and get it. Oh, Jesus. And he's late. And they're like calling the match to him on the phone. And then they go out into the ring and they think that he's going to make it to uh you know he was just going to go straight from the car into the ring yeah but uh he went to the wrong ymca i guess there's two ymcas in the area oh no he went to the wrong one. Oh no so so that's even, was just i was like looking at you because don't you remember me yelling like wait a minute where's chuck is somebody else like i didn't know if i was supposed to have another music like maybe another student would i don't know i never even said that to you too that's why i was yelling i didn't know if maybe a student was going to come out like you know student yeah, you're, for student. you're like you're like, where's Chuck? I said, he's not yeah, here. Like, he's not here. Know. And I'm like, well, who's coming out? And then the, the, somebody was like, well, no one. I'm like, all right, fuck it. And I guess it's a handicap match. But that was one of the things about Saturday that was crazy. The run sheet that you give me compared to what happened in the ring was different several times <laughs> throughout the day. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, you just got to kind of roll with it. Well, that's why you got to pay attention. Everyone thinks it's this easy-ass job. and <laughs> it's, it's not the easiest. No, it's- <laughs> It, uh, it it's not but i mean i do thrive in that environment of like fixing problems like that sure but I, I looked at you know because i was late because i had to get those stupid fucking clothes things. <laughs> so i was unaware of any of these uh, like uh, any of these ongoing problems yeah. that were going on throughout you know yeah, yeah. before the first show and like arthur MacArthur's getting ready to make his entrance and i was like where's chuck and he's like he tells me this story i'm like what like, how did nobody tell me this yet? You, you know what I mean? Like, his his music was playing, and he was explaining the story to me. Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, he says he says he's going to be here. He's coming straight to the ring. And I was like, what? what? I was like, how is this a plan? This is not a plan. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if if what we saw Saturday, though, out of the new kids, man, is any, is any indication for this Saturday and Fresh Meat, man, th- dude, they were fucking, that was fucking good. Big Sam ha- Hardway Holloway, dude, fucking that dude was sweet as fuck. Shaw Mason was fucking sweet. Uh, th- there were some sweet, some sweet debuts that happened. I don't know if that's official debuts or whatever, but if that's an I indication mean, of what we're going to see was fucking... They happen, so you, you know what I mean? They're, they're official. I mean, uh, that you know, that kid I, on the mic, I, Shaw Mason, there was a part, I don't know if you saw it, but he was in the ring kind of, you know, giving everyone shit, talking about, I won medals here, I beat people up all over, and he's calling people out that were sitting around. And like you said, this is like a family-friendly show. There was like kids everywhere and stuff. He says to this one little kid that's sitting there, he's like, hey, what about you? You know, you want to fight? You want to get in the ring? You know, because that was before Weirdster came out. And uh, he's calling out people in the crowd. And he points at this little kid. He says, yeah, you with the green shirt. You think you can beat me up? You want some of this? And this kid, little kid was probably like six or seven. He <laughs> looks down at his shirt and like grabs it. And you just see him in his in his mind realize, like oh shit my shirt is green oh sh- like he's talking to me oh no and he gets this look on his face and it was just absolute genuine like pro wrestling like it was so great like that kid was really good on the mic um big sam was great i thought uh the two matches he had were really good um so i'm really excited for saturday uh i don't know if you want to go go into what we got going on this weekend this if you got more to say about canton but uh the students we saw saturday were great no, I mean the only other thing I would see is you know say is weird body got to play a, a crowd plant because for some reason he wanted to play a crowd. Oh plant. shit, it was so great. <laughs> it, I mean, I was like, whatever, man, do whatever you want to do. I don't care. <laughs> it, it was so. It great. worked for that environment though. It was funny. He's like, 
the the city of North Canton just knows Weird Body is purple shirt. Dude, no, yeah, right, exactly. And then like it was really funny because he had the other match and we're like, man, we like went and got this guy music. He's got a single at all. <laughs> like this is great. But um, knowing Weirdster and like watching him and knowing he was gonna be the guy that was like getting called out and just was gonna come out. As Sean Mason was like talking crap to people in the crowd and doing all this, you see like Weirdster like just like like going through it like yeah like what is this guy like just playing it was just so great to watch i love weirdster so much and it was just really great to watch um that was yeah, a great it was match. uh yeah i was i was happy with it but i guess we should get into uh the bulk of it it is a a hard sell podcast for this weekend the 2022 jaylet weekend and we do need to hard sell. I mean, anybody that's in the Discord, they uh, are aware of the situation. This is by far the the worst presale in uh, since the comeback for sure. I mean, this is it's worse than a uh, a Winchester uh, Thursday. Uh, so little little nervous, you know what I mean uh, about about Friday and Saturday. I think Saturday afternoon. I think fresh meat is you know obviously should do well you know when you know we have uh seven eight debuts technically um you know i i'm not super worried about fresh meat but i am worried about the actual tournament portion of the weekend it is it's been it's been slow to say the least you think we're gonna get a lot i think it'll be a lot of walk up um i mean i mean i hope you know what i mean it probably doesn't help that, you know, when we planned this date, you know, nobody knew that Raw was coming and then AEW was also going to come this month. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, there's there, there's a lot going there's a lot going on. So Right, I was going to say maybe that's why some of the pre-sale hasn't gone as far because people's had to you have to spend typically have to buy your tickets for like Raw or AEW. That doesn't get too much walk up unless you're going to get like second party tickets but even anymore that's like through like StubHub and place like that and shit but yeah maybe people were kind of waiting until after all that was done and then this week they're going to grab tickets or this walk up like i said friday saturday walk up yeah so you know i'm, I'm hopeful i would really feel a lot more comfortable if we moved all those premium weekend passes um i mean if they don't move you know i don't know i'm gonna have to make a call you know sometime this week and you know, uh, kill the weekend passes and put up the tickets a la carte. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, the weekend passes do come with a substantial discount. Um, so I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's going to look weird if, you know, there's, I don't know, only 40 people in the front row. You know what I mean? When we can maybe just put those up a la carte and, you know, move those for individual nights. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's been, I've been like hoping, you know, it's going to pick up, it's going to pick up, it's going to pick up and it hasn't yet. Um, well, see if this which, is, this is the sign. Know. If you're waiting to get your tickets, make John Thorne happy, get on Eventbrite, get your weekend pass before it's too late and you got to pay way more because you're going to come Friday and then you're like, that was fucking sweet. And everyone's like, yeah, what are we doing tomorrow before the show and getting here? And you're like, oh my God, you know what I mean? So just... You might as well just get your weekend pass now, get it out of the way, and uh, start making your plans for the weekend. We're meeting up, drinking. What's after party looking like? We got any stuff like that lined up? We got, you know. Um, it's sounding like dive bar, but uh, not official. Official yet? Waiting, uh, waiting to hear what's what's going on with that. I mean, it's just been. There's been so many moving parts, and you know uh, it's been documented on this podcast. You know we were trying to find a hotel partner and all this stuff, and it's been it's been a lot more difficult this year for whatever reason. Yeah. Um. So you know what I mean. We're just kind of we're just kind of rolling with the punches and 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 winging it as best best we can right now to try to get try to get through the weekend. Um. I will say that you know. Everybody that is booked on Friday is booked Saturday, either on Fresh Meat or on Jail at Night 2. Uh, you know, unless there's some sort of injury or something uh, to that effect. Um, as of right now, everybody is set to appear on both days. Um, but you don't necessarily know what show they're going to appear on. 
on on day two you know so there's a possibility that somebody could appear on fresh meat that maybe is eliminated from the jailet tournament uh or you know they're eliminated from the jailer tournament and they just appear on night two in a non-tournament matchup. So right. we're, we're you know we're working through that. Uh, you know we're trying to make everything you know must see as much as possible. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't take that as a sign to you know wait or wait around. I would. I would get your tickets now. Get to Eventbrite and uh, get those weekend passes. Make John Thorne happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. And, you know, and that's why I am going to maybe look into some, you know, spacing this out a little better next year. You know, obviously it sounded it, it sounded great to move J-Lit to the end of summer because, you know, it was traditionally at the beginning of summer, either, you know, Memorial Day or, you know, in June. Uh, but then the summer just got so busy and, you know, everything else that's, that's been going on. I'm, I'm thinking maybe, you know, uh, in 2023, it sounds maybe more like it's going to be a fall, a fall situation, um, you know, or at least, you know, sometime in September or October, I, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure just yet, but, okay. um, you know, it's, a, a, I've been doing this for a long time and, you never never have it figured out that's the thing <laughs> it's like, evolving, as, yeah. as much as you as much as you know like you also don't know shit because everything changes and you know you can't you can't predict you know human behavior and disposable income and all that stuff you know what i well, mean so it's always especially, constantly changing you know i mean especially with this with the pandemic that i mean is still kind of around i mean definitely things are definitely not like just went back to every old normal day life so i mean that's definitely a you know and an, a hurdle to be jumped and things to be you know that dealt with differently think you know shit has changed so much in the last handful of years you know yeah it's kind of weird and like I, I think that we were spoiled almost coming out of the pandemic because everybody was so hungry for entertainment and so right. hungry for wrestling specifically. And now as more things are popping up, there's more competition for the entertainment dollar. There's, you know, uh, if you think about it, even like you, you couldn't even go see sports really during the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like uh, early on, you know, they did baseball in empty stadiums and they did football in empty stadiums. Yeah, Browns, you know what Browns I mean? won a playoff game in an empty stadium. I believe me. I remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's now, you know, like things are somewhat back to normalcy. You know what I mean? So it is always kind of a different. You know, just a, a different hurdle that you have to deal with as a as a promoter. I mean, you know, luckily we do have this, you know, fresh meat show that I think is going to do it, – it's going it, to – as of right now, fresh meat stands to be the most successful events of the weekend of the three. Um, you know, obviously, we – that's not the intention. We want the focus to be on the jailet and um, – you know, uh, remembering JT lightning and, you know, there's so many different reasons, you know, we want that event to be, you know, we want it to be a marquee event every year. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess sometimes, you know, that's just not the, not the way it goes. You know what I mean? As of right now, it, it doesn't appear that that is going to be what happens. Uh, so, you know, uh, it may be, Maybe it's too expensive. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe I got too ambitious with uh, the fly-in talent this year. You know, like uh, there, there, there's a lot of, you know, what ifs and maybe this is wise that I've been, you know, trying to figure out over, you know, the last couple of weeks. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's booked, it's done, it's advertised. You got to see it through to the end. So I mean we're we're gonna we're gonna ride it out until Saturday night and see what happens. Yeah, it'll be all right. Everyone's gonna buy tickets, right? No one, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's JT you Lightning me. Tournament, dude. It, it'll be all right. I'm confident. I'm glad some one of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anything else you, know, you want to discuss here? I mean, um, can, do you want to run down the? Uh, you want to run through the card? 
We have card let's, there. speaking yeah. of uh the out of town talent, there's a lot of uh there's some new names uh in the IW people we haven't seen before. So I mean Drago, I mean I, I I'm in for that guy. The man it's a dragon human. Why wouldn't you want well, that, That's that's the thing too, is um you know, some of these people, you know, this is going to be the only the only time you're going to see them. Like, you, you know, don't quote me on this, but, <laughs> you know, I don't know how often Ernest the Cat Miller is going to be making the trip back. That's what I was going to say. You There's know? a couple names that, I, yeah, you, I don't I don't think Ernest the Cat Miller is doing a lot of indie dates, uh, the big indie circuit, you know, aside from maybe the one he's going to do right now. Um, we got Drago versus Jack Evans, uh, and, I mean, that, that alone is worth the price of the admission right there. Those two are going to be jumping off crazy shit. Um, Marino Tanaglia versus Jocelyn Navarro. It's a great singles matchup we're going to see to homegrown AIW going at it. Chase Oliver versus Alec Price. Uh, Alec Price, where is he from? You want to let the people know, you know, where you heard about this guy, or how, you know, if, if they're not familiar. Well, I heard about him from Josh Bishop. He ne- never shuts up about him. Okay, he's, you know, he's. Uh, He's one of those, you know, kind of, you know, on the rise independent talents. You know, you, you can see him in in beyond. You can see him all over Limitless. Uh, he's all over IWTV. You know, and and uh, he seems to be, you know, one to watch. And uh, Josh Bishop has advocated for him for quite some time. Uh, and I thought, you know, this this would be the place to to bring him in and and give him a shot. That's, I mean, that's really all I would need to hear is that Josh Bishop. I mean, you got to think if if an insane man like Joshua Bishop is trying to bring somebody into AIW, he got to be all right because Josh isn't isn't just bringing any old schlubs in here. Uh, you know what I mean? The guy, he's for the you know he's for the AIW. He's for the brand here. I don't see Josh advocating for anybody. You know that, that ain't worth it. So. That should be something big. Chase Oliver, Alec Price. Uh, we got Derek Dillinger versus Mikey Montgomery. Little uh, Derek Dillinger little versus rematch. Mikey. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a good one. That's a rematch from the Biggins tournament, I believe. Right. Uh, Dominic Garini, the Bone Collector, versus Adam Priest. Um, Adam Priest, another new name that we haven't seen as far as I know. Right in AIW, is he? Have they been around before? Was that before my time at all, or is this going to be another AIW no, debut? No, you know, he, it's another debut. Okay. He's another guy that you know is is very much on the rise. Um, you know, in the in the southern independent scene, uh, pretty much. Um, you know, he's a guy that a lot of people have told me to keep keep my eye on. Um, and again, you know, much like Alec Price, I thought that you know the Jaylet tournament is, is is the perfect opportunity for him to come in and show what he he can offer um a lot of people advocate for this guy uh matthew justice told me about this guy like a year and a half two years ago okay um and i've i've been kind of you know keeping keeping my eye on him a little bit and uh, he's really been making a name for himself in this last six months or so uh throughout independent wrestling you know he's all over uncharted territory and you know all those uh, all those iwtv shows so uh you know he's another one that uh I'm, I'm pretty excited to see that's another one though again another insane person in aiw telling you to bring him in some people are very into every indie you know they watch all this stuff they get iwtv they cruise around they see it all they're on the bird app they're checking it all out they, they know all the indies they know all the guys some people we really follow AIW, maybe some, you know, one other indie here or there. So they don't know some of these names. But you know Matthew Justice, and if that guy says, and Joshua Bishop, if these two AIW guys you know are saying, hey, bring these guys in, that's all I really need to hear, personally. Um, got Dalton, Cat, oh, excuse me, Ernest the Cat Miller. Again, what you said, that's another name you're not going to see thrown around in the indies a lot. Versus Casey Carrington. That will be a very interesting first-round matchup. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to think of somebody really weird to to book, and um, I, I can't. I came up with Ernest the Cat Miller. <laughs> there you go. You know, I, I I don't know how it's gonna go. It could go good. It could go bad. You know, we'll see. Um, I mean that that's that's an interesting lineup. You know, an interesting matchup. You're not gonna see anywhere else but AIW. That's for sure. Uh, Dalton Castle versus Colin Delaney. 
Um, I know a lot of people have been asking about Dalton. That was a guy whose name has been thrown around into AIW. Hey, when is this guy going to be in um, for a while? Now. He was actually he was actually in AIW early, early in his career. Right. Yeah, I knew that. Um, but I guess I just mean recently, ever since he's been doing some indie stuff and kind of, you know, ever since he came back from being hurt. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a while. He's been busy. Uh, you know, he's and uh, expensive <laughs> uh, these the last few years. Cheap, <laughs> And, uh, you know, he was, he was a name that, um, you know, when you're trying to think of, you know, how to make this tournament unique, you know, you're, you're kind of looking at all avenues and all available talent. And, uh, you know, I thought it was, I thought this was the time, you know what I mean? Ring of, Ring of Honor was, you know, going through changes and all that stuff. And, you know, he's, uh, one of these, you know, highly sought after free agents in my opinion uh so i thought you know he'd be a perfect addition to the weekend um another thing i want to say about alec price is <laughs> he was actually the first person booked for the entire weekend interesting um he was the first person i reached out to whenever you know we started working on this so hmm. uh i i have a lot of uh high expectations for him yeah. you know to put any pressure on yeah, that's pressure on you too josh bishop no i'm just kidding <laughs> um uh, moving on against Dalton Castle two versus Colin Delaney. I mean, that's going to be a good. That is a good first round matchup. That will be a great wrestling match. <laughs> Childhood friends as well. You know what I mean. Uh, that so you know this this one is special for both of them. Uh, so I think you know w- when you get into situations like that, um, people seem to, to to bring their best out. You know what I mean. So right. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Colin Delaney, the only person who's been in every single Jaylet tournament. Yeah, and that just re- la- last year was because of an injury, or didn't he squeak in right at the yeah. last moment last year? Yeah, um, I think Colt Cabana uh, was injured. Something happened, yeah, and I swore he squeaked in, and that was like the tar- – they're like, yeah, because he's been in every one, so we're like, hey, we want to keep the streak alive. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, nobody's phoning in a, a match like that against a childhood friend. Both, uh, you know, Colin, a big AIW guy, you know, and you said uh, Dalton has been around. And he knows AIW is a special place, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a match indeed. Um, Wes Barkley versus Cheech, the other half of Two Infinity and Beyond versus Wes Barkley, who have had their you know their little bit of a beef. Yeah, and I think you know this is just a a really good matchup for for both guys. You know, Cheech is uh, the the surly veteran, and uh, you know Wes Barkley is you know this kind of you know on the rise in AIW talent, and uh, you know I I don't think Cheech Cheech wants to uh, go out in the first round. I'll put it that way. So Wes Barkley has a lot to prove, you know, and especially you know I think that for Wes personally, he has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. You know what I mean? They do the Rip City Shooters thing, but it seems the focus always goes to Joshua Bishop. Uh, I think Wes is really ready to to make his mark as a, as a singles wrestler. And let's not forget the entire tournament, you know, for those who haven't watched the Bill Alfonso uh, inaugural tournament, Joshua Bishop vacated the intense title. So the winner of the JLIT tournament will be the new AIW intense title. The the titles are split, um, you know, going forward. So, you know, we will have a, a new singles player and a new, you know, uh, not new, but, you know, it's, it hasn't been like that in a while. Right. Uh, championship belt the, to, uh, you know, be defended throughout the year. It hasn't been single since Janela. No, it hasn't been single since Matt Justice. Oh, did Justice have it after Janela? And then I thought Janela got hurt or whatever, yes. and that's why I vacated. And then he wasn't no, there no, for no, that no. one. Justice, <laughs> Justice was no. Justice was the intense champion, and, and he won the Jailet, and then he cashed in. Oh yeah, at Hell on Earth fourteen. Yeah, yeah, Hell on Earth fourteen, and um, no, beat right. Joshua Bishop, so he became the double champion, and we've had double champions ever since then. So yeah. Uh, it's been a few years and, uh, now we are going to officially split the belts again. And, um, you know, there will be an additional singles championship up for grabs and, uh, whoever wins the jail, will be 
your next intense champion. Yeah, because I mean, like you said too, and then that mean that's part of what makes every match big time. Cheech is a guy who's been around AEW for a long time. If you think he doesn't want that intense title, I mean, you're crazy. Cheech doesn't live all that far from AEW. You know, he he's a guy who you know he don't want to go out in the first round. You know, he's not a every time AEW roster member, but that ain't it's not gonna be a walk in the park for Wes Barkley or Cheech. Yeah, I agree. Um, keep moving forward. Uh, Isaiah Broner versus Philadelphia Collins. This is going to be a match. This is going to be a good one. I'm very excited. Uh, Big Bron Dog versus my man Phil Th- Philadelphia. This is going to be uh, too big. Too hey, Philly's been Philly's been calling him out. <laughs> you know, uh, Philadelphia is a big man. Broner's a big man. This is going to be too. Uh, this is going to be quite a match. Uh, I'm excited to see this one. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, you know, I, this is 100% because Philly was calling Broner out uh, well before I had figured out the first round matchups. Um, you know, Philly started this campaign, and when I was putting it together, I went, you know what? He wants it. He gets it. Yeah, I mean, the things, you know, with PME have been, you know, I won't say rocky between them per se, but, you know, ever since losing the title, you got to think that, you know, hey, an intense title run for either Marino or, you know, Philadelphia Collins is is, is definitely not far from the top of their mind. You know what I mean? Uh, that's kind of what I think makes this j extremely special as well. You know, it's not like you're going to, you win this j and then you get your chance to go whatever belt, yada, yada. They're, we're going to, somebody's raising that belt at the end of the night. You know what I mean? And that's going to be a, a pretty sick, uh, you know, for whoever gets to take it home, it's going to be a special night. No, I, I, I 100% agree. I think that there's a, uh, quite a, quite a bit to be excited about, you know, uh, about this tournament, which is why I'm hopeful, you know, we can, get some people in the door because we do and we still have we still have quite a few i mean we're talking about that brown big brown dog versus philadelphia is going to be incredible again two more big guys going at it kaplan versus jackson stone two big men beating the shit out of each other that is going to be a match in itself um right i mean i just you know when you're looking at the field i i, I couldn't think of a better two guys to, to go at it in the first round than these two guys. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dom Dom and uh, Shogun had quite a feud. You saw quite some some serious heat and uh, a mean streak from, from Shogun Jackson, Jackson Stone, and uh, seeing that against the blue-collar brawler, Kaplan is going to be uh, – that's going to be a battle. I can't wait. Um, this one – this one is going to excite me. This may be a little, so some tension stemming from a little, what we just recently talked about on Saturday. Somebody was a little late. Chuck Stone versus Artie Mack. Maybe they're going to settle a little differences uh, and get themselves right for some, for some future tag action going forward. You know, it's funny that you said that because <laughs> I didn't think about that, but Artie was very upset. So <laughs> he holds that to heart. He's going to be. No, l- I, I think you're on, I think you're onto something with that. Yeah. So, I mean, and then that's J, the J, the JT Lightning tournament. It's a place you're only really going to see a match like that. You're not going to see Chuck versus Artie really on any other AIW shows. I mean, you know what I mean? That's something you no. got to come check out. Um, and you, you know, when I was when I was thinking about that, I went, you know, uh, we have a lot of tag guys in here. You know, I don't know how much how much stock people are going to put into you know tag guys advancing. You know what I mean? And I went, well, you know. Let's just put the tag champs up against each other and, and, and see what happens. I like the idea. You know, they, uh, they're they going to set things straight here. See, you know, get everything right going forward and beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> um, and then finally, the last match, uh, a couple of Eric's battling it out. Eric Taylor versus Eric Young. Um, a young guy versus a vet. Um, interesting to see what, you know, what young Eric Taylor is going to do against a, a scrappy vet like Eric Young, who's been around everywhere at this point, right? Yeah, I think this is this is probably um, the biggest match of Eric Taylor's career, easily. Um, so, you know, uh, I think it's a huge test for him. I think it's probably uh, going to be a, a rough night at the office for for. Eric Taylor, but you know, this is the way that people learn, you know what I mean? Sometimes people have to learn the hard way. And this is, you know, one of the benefits of, of going through the AW system is, you know, you get thrown to the wolves sometimes in there with, uh, you know, a longtime veteran and, uh, 
you're going to learn one way or another. And this is uh, Eric Taylor's learn one way or another uh, and appreciate your potential that it, that everyone else sees in you. So uh, we're, 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 we're throwing them the wolves and we're going to see what happens uh, on Friday night. I like it. Um, Eric, He's been. They've been in matchups before, bigger matchups, bigger guys, and the Bitcoin boys have always found. Not always, I won't say always, but have found their way, uh, found their way out of it. And I'm excited to see, you know, how Eric handles this and uh, going forward. You know, going forward, I, I think Eric's Mikey both great singles. I like him as the Bitcoin boys, but the singles action I've seen him in has been great. And I think this is, yeah, this is a very big opportunity for uh, future too bright Eric Taylor. No, I agree. Um, and you know, this is just really like, Hey, let's, you know, let's, let's just see what you can do. You know what I mean? Like, let's go for it. I mean, uh, everybody, you know, sees the potential that Eric Taylor has, um, you know, Nathan Zagura may be the biggest Eric Taylor fan on the planet. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so I thought, you know what, fuck it. Let's, you know, let's throw him in there with, you know, arguably, the uh you know m- most uh intimidating veteran i guess in this lineup and uh see how he does former sanity member for god's sakes <laughs> i mean super eric huge you know tna run yeah uh you know just uh, a crazy career you know this is uh, this is for sure the biggest singles opportunity eric taylor has has ever had um Big Nate Zagura going to be in the house. I think the Browns are probably playing Friday or Saturday preseason. I think um, I think he will be there Saturday, nice. but not Friday. Okay, nice. All right. Um, well, I mean, that's twelve incredible matches right there. Uh, plus anything that's and then not announced. He, I mean, it's AIW. You right. know there's going to be some right. Other then shit. you know, obviously, Jail at Night Two is going to be full of unannounced surprise matches as well so um we have a lot of fun stuff planned uh very hopeful that uh we can you know we can pack the odeon on on friday and saturday both you know for me Um, are i don't know if this is too much i guess i obviously could cut this out if you don't want the other you know behind the wall to hear there and behind you know the fans here but are we going to do it the similar where it's uh a four-way for the or the you know how the the, the format was last year because that was a pretty sweet that was that yeah. was sweet how those matchups are you're going to see some cool matchups in the second round from from these first round matchups yeah so um we, we made that switch a few years ago uh with the jaylet and um you know I, i've decided we should probably we should stick with it um, I, like I think it, it just I, I think it makes the the whole weekend a little bit more digestible so, you know, the first round is 12 singles matches. Round two is three four ways, one fall to a finish. So, you know what I mean? Everyone's trying to win. Um, I guess you would call those a fatal four way. You know, it's it, it, it's not an elimination. So one fall to a finish. Um, and then the final will be a traditional ECW three way dance elimination. So you get a little bit of everything. Uh, as far as the tournament goes, you get a singles, a four-way, and a, and an elimination three-way uh, for the final. And then, you know, in between, you know, if you think about that, that's uh, that's three match, that's four matches on night two. So there's a lot of room to uh, fill in with uh, surprise stuff uh, as we prepare for the final. Um, so uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff planned. Uh, I I hope people come out and support it this weekend. Uh, you know, yeah. I am uh, I, I am a little bit more doom and gloom than I have been uh, recently, uh, other than that uh, one Winchester show that had atrocious uh, pre-sale. Uh, this one has me a, a, a little bit nervous, uh, to say the least. But we still have uh, this entire week to uh, move those weekend passes. Uh, I will say that uh, everybody that buys a weekend pass you're getting a special uh lanyard and uh you're also going to get a event poster as well as whatever your guaranteed seat ticket will be well, that's so. cool as hell people love lanyards and that, shit like that like the passes like they get from cons and stuff like that's cool that's sweet yeah a little souvenir so, action Right, so we're working on that, and um, need some staff yeah, laminates, so, dude. 
well, we we might get there. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I got my. It won't be as nice as my gathering of the juggalos all access. Right, right, uh, right. <laughs> but you know, we're, we're we're working on a little bit of a budget, but we are getting uh, lanyards to try to expedite the uh, ticketing process and you know all that stuff. That's cool for the weekend passes. Uh, you know, we thought that there'd be more sold before we bought all the materials, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still holding out hope that, uh, people are going to come through and, uh, support this weekend. Uh, cause it is special. You know what I mean? I, I know a lot of people are relatively new to Cleveland wrestling and they weren't, uh, a lot of the listeners aren't, you know, familiar with JT lightning and Cleveland all pro wrestling, but, uh, long before AIW, Cleveland All Pro Wrestling was an institution in uh, Cleveland Independent Wrestling. I believe the f- first show was in like 1993, and they ran all the way up until uh, JT passed away. Um, which it's crazy that it has been t- like 10 years at this point. I mean, uh, it just it's just crazy how how much uh, how much time flies. Uh, as far as you know just wrestling and life in general like 10 years feels like you know like nothing but you know it's he died in in 2011 you know what i mean it's 2022 now so i guess technically 11 years um so yeah i mean we're just uh you know we biggins and i said it on the podcast a long time ago but you know, the last text he, he sent us both was, you know, make sure nobody forgets me. And, you know, uh, I'm doing my best to, uh, you know, hold up my end of the bargain on that. Uh, pretty, pretty heavy thing. You know what I mean? To, to get, you know, when you, somebody knows that they're dying yeah, and, uh, they request that. So, you know, I'm as long as I can, I'm going to do this tournament. Um, even though it is financially stressful and everything else, and it would be so much easier to not do it. And, you know, uh, I'm going to do it because this is, uh, this is what he, he, he asked of us, you know what I mean? And, um, Biggins and I both took that very seriously because, you know, we had our ups and downs with JT, but at the end of the day, um, I think he always respected AIW and what we did and, uh, even when we were at odds at certain times, he always, you know, would be there to help or talk or, you know, uh, reach out out of out of nowhere and kind of, you know, bury whatever we were mad at each other about. And um, when he knew that he was not going to make it for him to say that to us, uh, we took very seriously, you know, um, not to bring the vibe down or whatever, but. It was, uh, you know, it's something that uh, is is pretty special to me. Is uh, carrying on, you know, and, and making sure people remember his his legacy and, and what he is and what he did for for Cleveland wrestling and you know his his family comes out every year for the event and yeah, uh, it really makes them feel good that that people remember you know what he did and all the sacrifices he made to, you know, just promote independent wrestling in the city of Cleveland. That's just going to say, I think it's special to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> I do think there's a lot of fans that remember and know JT and, and, you know, I think it's special to a lot of people. We do have a lot of newer fans, uh, you know, myself included, but I do think there are a lot of people that know and understand the specialness of this weekend. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I really, really hope so. You know what I mean? Um, it's uh i wanted to i wanted to do good you know what i mean obviously you know you always worry about the finances and 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 all that stuff but um you know it's uh you know it it has a little bit more of a meaning than that you know what i mean yeah um and like if it was really about finances you know we could have taken this event off the schedule a long time ago because it's every year it is always a crazy struggle yeah uh and uh you know uh i also want to shout out um you know lars rockney uh former cleveland all pro wrestler um he purchases the trophy every year you know there's a lot of people that 
look forward to this event that you might not know and appreciate, you know, what we do to try to keep uh, JT's memory, you know, fresh and alive. Uh, so I just wanted to shout him out because, you know, he drops money every year to, to purchase the trophy and, um, you know, there's there's a lot more people kind of behind the scenes that really are pulling for this event for, you know, their years of interactions with JT and, and different things. So, um, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just hopeful that it all works out, you know, for, you know, there's the financial reasons, there's the, you know, uh, his family coming out. There's, you know, there's so many different kind of reasons why I wanted to do good, but ultimately I wanted to do good because, you know, he wants, uh, he wanted us to make sure nobody forgot him. And, uh, you know, I want there to be people there, you know, to ensure that, uh, I've held up my end of the bargain. So, yeah, I mean, if that above everything, you know, if you're on the fence or you haven't gotten your ticket yet, you know, do it for a guy who put his heart and soul into Cleveland wrestling. You know, he, he, JT is a big reason of um, a huge reason of why, you know, AIW is around and why we get, as wrestling fans, Cleveland is such a great area for wrestling. JT was a big, you know, proponent, proponent of that. And, uh, you know, do it for him, man. Absolutely. I think, you know, there's probably no better way to, to end it than that, than on that. Uh, sorry to bring the vibe down so much there at the end, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. That's just what I was feeling right now. Well, we got to remember that, that, that is what this weekend is about is for JT lightning. So, you know. That's it. It is what it is. We got to remind people. That's why we're doing this. There's a lot of reasons other than just hey, we're just putting on this wrestling show. There's some, you know, some real stuff at hand that, you know, you're trying to, trying to uphold your part of the bargain for. Absolutely. Well, until next time. Uh, does Steve have a catchphrase or something? I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll see you guys. I, I mean, he's he's only he's only a part timer at this point. Oh, he's been, he keeps calling up. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see everybody this weekend. Come on and get your tickets. Get to Eventbrite. Get those weekend passes. Get uh, you know, get out for fresh meat. We got a lot of students debuting. A lot of a lot of people putting a lot of hard work uh, to come to fruition this weekend. Come on out and support some great Cleveland wrestling. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Thanks.